was the assassination of Israeli Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin predicted a full year before it actually happened? Does the book of Deuteronomy contain a series of encoded words that reveal the names of the major participants in today's Israeli peace process? Could we have known months in advance that the federal building in Oklahoma City would be bombed and the name of the man who would do it? Is there buried within the ancient text of the Torah information about the assassination of Robert Kennedy, predictions of man walking on the moon, and warnings of the sinking of the Titanic? Are we continuing to discover that God actually dictated warnings to Moses nearly 3,500 years ago that appear to be meant for us today? While the critics of the Bible Code continue to attack the original Bible Code discoveries, numerous Bible Code software developers have commercially advanced Bible Code research way beyond the pioneer findings of the late 1980s. New ELS research is moving beyond the nominal word association pattern discoveries of the past to complex matrix discoveries. Here's the full Thomas Edison matrix revealing in an orderly model 55 important historical items about his life. In the Bible Code, we've discovered the USA Embassy terrorist bombings in the African nations of Kenya and Tanzania. For example, in the Kenya bombing, there were 19 reference terms with multiple mentions of specific facts that describe the terrorist attack all located in a compact matrix centered in Haggai 114. Embassy was the central term of the matrix with USA crossing over embassy three times. We found in the same tight matrix, the location being Nairobi, Kenya, August 7, 1998, the date of the bombing, in the morning at 1045, that 247 people were killed and murdered by a truck bomb. We also found the names of the three alleged terrorists. The most important warning in the Bible Code is that we might face the real Armageddon, a nuclear world war, perhaps in the near future. Even as the controversy continues, we shouldn't lose sight of the fact that no matter which of the experts we choose to believe, in the final analysis, we must each decide how this new reality will impact our thoughts and actions. Science seems to have proven that the code is beyond the element of chance, and the scope of the encryption would appear to be beyond the scope of human ability, which brings us to the information in the code itself. Could it be divinely ordained, as Rabbi Bakya suggested? The discovery of the Bible codes in our generation provides powerful evidence to skeptics that the Bible truly is the inspired Word of God. They also validate almost a decade of work by my friend Yaakov Ramsel, a messianic pastor in San Antonio, Texas, who manually has examined the Hebrew scriptures and has found the very same phenomena in the Bible codes. Yaakov Ramsel has unwittingly added a whole new layer of controversy to discussion of the Bible code. But in all fairness, it must be said he was working on the code long before the scientists. Over 20 years ago, Ramsell began his search for the name of Yeshua, or Jesus, in the codes. He used the same skip sequence technique as Weissmandel had done many years earlier. And like Weissmandel, Ramsell didn't have a computer. What he did have was an enormous amount of dedication and a firm belief that the codes hinted at by the Jewish sages were real. In Genesis 1, in the Torah, beginning in the fifth verse, the first word, counting every 172 letters, every 172 letters spells the name Yeshua in Hebrew, which means Jesus. Then at the end of the Torah in Deuteronomy, starting at the very last portion, counting in reverse Every 172 letters spells Hamashiach, the Messiah. In Genesis 20 and verse 2, counting every five letters in there, Hakarek Otshlav in Hebrew, which means in English, the lattice work of the equidistance letter sequence. The meaning of the insight is the method by which we found it. Now, if this is not scientific, I don't believe there's anything scientific. This is the most remarkable insight proving 
that the letter sequence is ethical, it's mathematical, it's scientific, and it sets a pattern. And we have the Ten Commandments recorded in Exodus 20th chapter. There are 179 words in that chapter. In every 179th letter, we have a wonderful insight. If you count every 179th letter, it spells Hosea Yeshua Shmi, which means salvation of the Lord Jesus is my name. Some critics, of course, have suggested Ramsell's work is a matter of pure chance, suggesting that even though the name Yeshua does appear, it doesn't necessarily refer to Jesus of Nazareth. The prophet Isaiah wrote a powerful prophecy about the coming Messiah that is recorded in Isaiah chapter 52 and 53. This remarkable prophecy of the future Messiah is often called the suffering servant messianic prophecy. In an exhaustive analysis of this brief but very detailed prophecy, Yaakov Ramsel made several startling discoveries. Not only had God encoded the name of Jesus Christ in these passages, but the names of virtually everyone else involved in the crucifixion and his ministry. He found Jesus, the name the Nazarene, Messiah, three Marys, the two high priests, Ananias and Caiaphas, King Herod, Pilate, and many of the names of Christ's disciples, all of them found in one prophetic passage, 41 names in all encoded in Isaiah's prophecy. One fact about the Bible that is not in dispute, and that is that both the Old Testament and the New are full of numbers. Some of these numbers are simple and straightforward. Others leave the reader completely befuddled. Could the key to the Bible encryptions lie in these enigmatic numbers? It would be difficult to discover the number of times seven appears in some significant way in the Bible. Seven churches, seven lampstands, seven seals, seven trumpets, seven thunders, seven angels, seven miracles, seven beatitudes, and the seven days of Genesis. And this barely begins to scratch the surface. Weissmandel discovered Yahweh at a skip interval of seven, and Torah at a skip interval of 49, or seven times seven. And in one of the Bible's most amazing prophecies, Daniel is told that 70 sevens are determined upon the people and upon the holy city. When Peter asks Christ how many times he should forgive a brother, the Savior answers with that same enigmatic number, 70 times 7. Is it possible that there is a key to the code hidden somewhere in the number or combination of numbers of 7? Or are these simply isolated events, independent of one another? Then again, perhaps the key is not numeric at all. The ELS code is, of course, based on numbers. But is there also evidence of other kinds of codes? The most essential truths in the Bible are, of course, put in a form that anyone can understand. But that doesn't preclude the fact that there are mysteries hidden in the Bible that are there as challenges to us. And there are many examples. One of the classic ones is the life of Matthew Fontaine Mari who as a youngster was fascinated as he read the scriptures that there, are pass there was a passage in the Psalm, Psalm 8 and also in Isaiah that makes reference to pathways in the seas. What a strange idea, he thought. Are there pathways in the sea? In 1825 he became a midshipman, spent the rest of his life gathering data, developing what we now know as the science of oceanography. He was able to get captains to gather data. He ended up developing charts of ocean currents in the Atlantic, the Pacific, and the Indian Oceans. And he, as a result, is widely regarded throughout the world as the father of the science of oceanography. All because he was uh, prompted by these hidden little allusions in the Psalms and Isaiah. Two key points regarding the codes. First, we never look to codes or something that esoteric for doctrine or theology that's in any way contradictory to the plain text. The second point is we are expressly prohibited in the Torah from methods of divination. Using the codes to predict the future is divination and is expressly prohibited in the Bible. Predicting the future or not being able to predict the future. Well, that's a controversy for another time after scientists and Bible scholars have had a chance to further study and debate this developing issue.